In today's episode, you are going to learn about the basic settings for the portrait photography. If you are a beginner and if you want to get started with portrait photography, these basic settings would come very useful and very handy for you. Coming up. Hi. Hi everyone, I'm Harshwardhan. Welcome to another superb episode. In today's episode, I'm going to tell you some basic settings which are most important, which would also help you to get started with the portrait photography. And I have created this blog post which is called the Ultimate Guide to Portrait Photography 2018 on my website harshwardhanart.com. Do check that out if you want to learn the tips and tricks for the photography and the post processing or the photo editing. So link to this post is in the description section. If you want to read this post, you can check that out. So in this tutorial, you are going to learn some basic settings which can be used to start taking amazing portrait. So in order to master something, you need to know the basics. If you don't know the basics, you will not get it right. All right, though you can take the amazing portraits even without any guide or without knowing these rules with the auto mode, but auto mode will not give you the perfect result or the perfect outcome which you want in every situation. So in that case, we have to use the manual mode and for manual mode, you need to know about three basic settings of three basic things. So number one is the aperture, number two is the shutter speed and number third is the ISO. Alright, so we'll take, at, take a look at all these three things and what settings or what uh, is the starting point for all these three things. Alright, so since portrait photography is the most fun and exciting genre of photography amongst all and Obviously, when we get our first camera, it is most likely the first photograph would be of a person, be it a family member or a friend, all right? Though you can take the portrait images without any guidance or any sort of rules to follow, but if you are a beginner and shooting with DSLR camera, then these reference guide will help you to take full control over the final output or fi final result of the image so rely rather than relying on the auto settings so it's always recommended to always shoot in the manual mode as i have already told you so if you want to become a professional photographer and want the professional results professional results of professional looking images then you must shoot with a dslr camera and in the manual mode in a dslr camera so following are the rules of reference or some tips which will help you to get started with the portrait photography and you can take your portrait, portrait photography to the next level if you know these basic settings or basic rules all right so first of all the most important part is the aperture aperture and what are the basics for the aperture or basic settings for the aperture so aperture in dslr camera is defined with f letter and if you don't know what aperture means then let, let me tell you that aperture is what controls the depth of field or it also determines that what area should be in focus and what area should not be in focus so in general terms if you want everything to be in focus then in that case you need to choose the narrow aperture which means the highest f number so f number can be f11 f20 f21 or something like that but if you want uh, the certain part of the subject in focus and throw everything else in the uh, background as blur then you need to choose the widest aperture widest aperture means lowest f number so f lowest f number possible in your lens so it could be f 1.8 f 1.4 or if you are shooting with a basic kit lens then it should be f 3.5 okay so it depends or it differs from lens to lens so if you want a flattering image 
of portrait image then you must aim for the lowest f number so this is also the rule of thumb rule of thumb says that go for the lowest f number to blur the background and to get the bokeh effect so what the bokeh effect is so you might have heard this word bokeh bokeh is a japanese word for blurring the background is basically as you can see in this image this area is totally blurred and this is also blurred so this is called the bokeh effect in general terms is the blurring the background all right and bokeh is very popular everybody is after this because it throws the background out of focus and that makes your subject stand out as you can see in this image this lady stands out from the background or distracting any elements okay so for blurring the background you need a prime lens all right most of the time if you are shooting with the uh, basic kit lens you will not get the bokeh effect or the bokeh effect would not be that much so if you want the bokeh effect a uh, decent amount of bokeh effect then you need to have the prime lenses with you so uh, what is the prime lenses you can see uh, you can check out this post best budget portrait lenses so i have discussed certain uh, lenses which are budget um, budget portrait lenses and using which you can take amazing amazing portraits and you can throw the background into blur or you can get the amazing bokeh effect with these lenses so if you go to my website harshwadhanar.com or the link to this blog post and i will uh, link to this blog post as well and video which i have created for this in the description section and you can check that out and you will get to know more about these lenses in detail where i have given the uh, example images or the sample images that what kind of a quality or what kind of a result you would get with these lenses so i have discussed the 50 mm lens i think 85 mm lens and 35 mm lens as well besides this there are certain prime lenses or the portrait lenses which are also called the prime lenses and there are certain which are the zoom lenses all right so i have discussed or i have given the example of them so one is a 50 mm lens which is again the most popular since this is very affordable and gives you the amazing quality since it has the lowest aperture is f 1.8 or f 1.4 you will get lots of bokeh amazing bokeh with this 50 mm lens all right and these are some examples if you want to you can check them out so next is the 85 mm lens 85 mm is the first choice for the portrait photographer so if you are a serious portrait photographer or a professional want to become professional portrait photographer you must get 85 mm lens because the lens uh, image quality and the bokeh amount is really really uncomparable it's really amazing all right and this one is also affordable but not that affordable the 50 mm is less cheaper but this one is little bit more on the higher side of the price as you can see it costs in indian rupees 25 uh, thousand something whereas uh, this one costs around 6000 or 7000 or 10000 all right in indian rupees and then we have the 35 mm lens this is again uh, this is not the portrait lens as such but uh, since it also allows you to go even up to the f 1.8 or f 1.4 this is also uh, you can be used for the everyday photography since its uh, working length is or focal length is very workable so even if you have the small room or the small studio or small area you can take amazing portraits or any kind of a photos with this uh, 35 mm lens whereas if you are shooting with 85 mm lens you need to go outside or you have to have a very larger uh, large amount of a large space or the large room or the large studio otherwise you will not be able to capture with 85 mm lens okay so in this case the 35 mm lens is very useful this is the first choice for the 
street photography as well and i also have this 135 mm lens and this is my everyday lens so i can shoot anything with the 35 mm lens so these are some examples and next big thing is the 70 to 200 mm lens this is a zoom lens and this is again the second best choices for the professionals or the first choice you can say when you are making lots of money where then you can get this uh, lens or if you can afford this you can get this lens 70 to 200 mm lens and it's very very costly one because they are uh, one which is cheaper also but that doesn't allow you to go the f 2.8 so it's 70 to 200 mm f 2.8 lens so it gives you lots of work okay, it gives you the creamy background it gives you the amazing sharp pictures which are uncomparable so 85 mm lens and 70 to 200 mm lens is the two main lenses which every professional photographer would have professional portrait photographer would definitely have so these are two because this one is very costly as you can see it costs more than double of the a normal DSLR camera. It costs around 50,000 50, and uh, it's 77,000 or uh, I think uh, this one is 1,47,000 as well. So it costs around 2. It's, uh, it allows uh, to go even f 2.8. All right. So in Sigma variant, you will get it less cheaper and uh, there is Tamron one which costs even less than that. They also gives you the great quality so you if you are serious about portrait photography you can get one of them all right and then we have the 105 mm lens this is basically a micro lens and it is basically called the micro prime lens and uh, most of the wedding photographers they do have it because this gives them uh, enough uh, place or enough a room to stand and take the pictures uh, from the distance so uh, basically if you are shooting the candid images or the candid portraits then this is very useful all right so you can go for this one as well you can check them out and this is the ebook which i recommend if you want to learn the trick photography and you can check this out this trick photography special effect book this would teach you so many techniques like this these kind of a special effects and all that if you want to learn all these trick photography and the uh, special effects photography then you must check this out all right and then we have the second important thing that is the shutter speed all right when in manual mode you have to decide the shutter speed as well so now let's take a look at the shutter speed the second important thing which helps you to take the stunning photograph or the particularly it helps you to get the sharp and clear picture so if your shutter speed is not appropriate or you have not uh, get it right you might get the blurry shot and blurry shots you know are useless all right so what is the rule of thumb for the shutter speed rule of thumb for the shutter speed is that you should start with 1 by 25th of a second or at least double the minimum focal length of the lens so what does it mean then since we are going to take the portrait of human beings and even of all the pets so we need to have at least 1 25th of a second because that allows you uh, the room for the moment because we as a human being or if you are shooting uh, taking the pet portraits then obviously they move a little bit and in that case 125th allows you to move and at the same time you can capture them all right so there are less likely chances if you are shooting with one or uh, 125th of a second that they will you will get the blurry shot or the unsharp image all right unless your subject is very unsteady all right so 125th is the rule of thumb you can uh, choose this one or if you just don't want to choose this one it should at least be the double the focal length of your camera lens so what does it mean 
so if you're shooting with 50 mm lens then at least your shutter speed should be one hundredth of a second or more it, however you can even go a little bit lesser uh, lower than that but in that case you have most likely to get the blurry shots or if you are shooting with 80 to 55 mm lens basic kit lens and you are shooting at 18 mm focal length in that case it should be at least 1 by 14th of a second which is more than the double of 18 mm so this is a rule of thumb that whatever lens you are choosing so if you are uh, suppose you are shooting with uh, 35 mm lens then your shutter speed must be at least uh, more than one uh, so more than 70th of a second all right so in that case if you choose the appropriate shutter speed or if you'll go by these rules you will uh, it's uh, less likely that you will get a blurry or the unsharp images now let's take a look uh, for the settings for the portrait of children so rule of thumb does not apply to the children's unless they are very steady and you know that the children's are the most unsteady subject they are always moving they are always doing uh, different weird stuffs and it's very hard to take pictures of them so in that case you need to have a very special or need to choose a special setting in order to capture the moment or capture the pose you want so in that case you have to choose the action mode in your camera so what is action mode action mode is basically the burst mode it's not actually the action mode it's called the burst mode but we also call it the action mode since it captures multiple frames within one second so what you what uh, what happens when you press a shutter button so pre by pressing one time shutter speed, uh, shutter shutter button it is going to capture multiple frames and in that case you will get some blurry shots but at least you will get some shots which are sharp enough so you can see this uh, boy is running and this has been captured and you can see this movement has been captured so it would not have been possible without the action mode however you can get this with 1 25th of a second as well but if you are using the burst mode then most likely it is most likely that you will get so many good uh, images like this and you can see over here as well this one is also with the help of uh, burst mode okay and you can see one more example over here you can see you will be amazed sometimes by the results you will get and you can see the moment at which this one has been captured is amazing so this kind of shots are possible when you choose the burst mode in your camera so these are these were the basic settings for the shutter speed and now let's take a look at the iso settings so what is iso iso is basically a sensitivity to the light and what it does it exposes your camera sensor to the light and what it basically does the it introduces the noise or the grain in the image so it's very important that you always go for the lowest f number so this is the rule of thumb for the iso it says that you should always choose the lowest iso number in most cases in most dslr camera it is the lowest iso number is 100 but some full frame uh, dslr cameras they also offer the lowest f number as 50 okay and you can see this image these two images uh, this one is having the uh, 100 iso and you can see this one is 1600 iso and you can see the difference between the quality it has grains it has noise but this one is very clean and clear crisp image okay so you should always go for lowest iso but there are certain situations where you just cannot choose iso 100 so what can be done in that case you can increase it up to 400 beyond that you can even go for 800 iso but beyond that you will get the very bad image quality which is not usable all right but with the advent of technology latest cameras the latest dslr cameras they do have the very high performance even with the uh, 
high number of ISO. So, but still the 100 would give you the best quality. But if you want to go beyond that, you will know at least that you are going to lose some quality. So if the that is fine with you, you can choose that as well. But I never go for beyond 400 or the 800. 800 is the dead limit. 400 is a normal limit. So this is the reference or the basic thing which you need to keep in mind while uh, deciding the settings or add the field or in the field all right so just remember that more iso means lesser quality low less iso means higher quality just remember this so these were some basic settings for the or some basic tips for the uh, aperture shutter speed and iso and one more bonus tip for the portrait photography or the one bonus setting and that is for the backlit portraits so suppose you are shooting the backlit portraits in that case what happens that it's very hard to get the face of the model or the subject exposed so in that case you have to use either the reflector or you have to use some flashlight to brighten the face or subject the or subject or the model but sometimes we still don't get the proper exposure so in that case suppose you are don't have the reflector and uh, suppose you don't have the flash and in that case what you can do you uh, you can increase the iso to brighten up uh, the model or what you can do you can increase the exposure compensation so you can choose uh, you can go for the exposure compensation so exposure compensation is a, a option in your uh, in your camera so using which you can brighten the face of the model so most people what they do they increase the iso but i would suggest that you should not increase the iso you should rather increase your or use the exposure compensation you can increase at one stop and two ten, five stops or ten stops and you can brighten up the model or your subject in that case you will not lose the quality you will still get the better quality and properly exposed subject or image and if you are shooting in a raw format which i always suggest that if you are shooting in a raw more a raw format then you can easily recover the details even in that dark area which is not properly exposed so you can do that as well so these were some quick references or the basic reference guide however just remember these are just for the rule of reference and you should not limit your creativity with these these references or these rules so you can just if you just know them just use them to your advantage all right so i have created a quick reference guide as well so where i have mentioned these uh, all these tips in a very short notes so if you want to download this free pdf guide then you can download it from here by clicking on this download button now or you can go to the blog post which i have uh, included in the description section and you can just click and download this quick reference guide you can keep this in your mobile phone or you can print this out as well and that would help you whenever you want to just have a reference to this and now it's your turn if you like today's episode and like these tips and tricks or these basic settings please do let me know in the comment section and if you want to say something else or if you have any question you can leave that in the comment section below also, I have an awesome Facebook group or Facebook group community where you can post your work, you can post your questions, you can get help regarding photography or the post processing. So you can join this by clicking on this button and leave your request and I'll approve that request. So thank you so much. Bye bye. See you in the next tutorial. Till then, keep shooting and unleash the creative in you. And if you have still not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe by clicking the big red button below this video and don't forget to click the bell icon as well. 
that way you will not miss any new video from this channel thank you so much bye bye do check